With the announcement of the new group by and pivot by functions in Excel, there's been a lot of discussion about whether these new functions will be compatible with slicers because they have pivot table type functionality. The good news is, yes, we can use slicers with these functions, and I'm going to show you how. Not only that, but this method even works with the filter function. So if you're ready, let's get started. Here we are in Excel, and this is the data that we're working with. Our data is inside a table and we have a column called item, region, size, and value. If we want to add slices for this table, we select any cell in that table, then click insert, and then come across to slicer. In the insert slices dialog box, we can select which columns we want slices for. Let's select item and region, and then I'll click OK. So that has now created those two slices. And because this is a table, when we click on those slices, it will then filter that table for the items that we have selected. Here we are on a new worksheet. I've already copied across my two slices, and now let's enter our pivot by formula. Equals pivot by, open bracket. The first argument is what values do we want in the rows? Well, let's suggest that we want to have our item value in the rows. So from our data table, we want our item column. The second argument is what values do we want across the columns? Let's suggest we want the region. So again, that'll come from our data table and we want our region column. The next argument is which column do we want to calculate on in the body of our pivot by function? We're going to use our values column. So again, from our data table and we will pick up our value column. The next argument is what function do we want to perform? We're going to keep this simple today. So we're just going to use the sum function. This now brings us to the optional arguments. The first argument is field headers. It asks whether the data that we've provided, does that have any headers? In this case, it doesn't. So I'll enter zero. The next argument is total row depth. This is about whether we have totals and subtotals. In this scenario, we do want grand totals, so I'll enter one. Then we have the row sort order. This is where we get to declare which row we want to sort on. I'm going to enter one. So we're gonna sort on the first row in ascending order. The next argument is the column total depth. This is whether we want totals and subtotals to appear in our function. Let's say we do want grand totals. I'll enter a comma, and that brings us to the column sort order. I'm going to enter one. So that means our column will be in ascending order. Finally, we come to our filter array. We're going to come back to this in a few moments time. So let's just close our pivot by and press return and make sure that this is functioning correctly. So down the rows, we have that item column. Across the columns, we have the region column. And in the body, we have the values column. And we've summed those values. And you can see, that we have totals for our columns and totals for our rows. Right, it's now time to add our slicer into our pivot by formula. For this, we're going to use the subtotal function. So let's come up here to our filter array argument. Now how this works is that we need to calculate an expression for each row of our source data. So an expression for each row of our data table. If the value of that expression is true, it means that row will be passed into our pivot by function for calculation. If that expression is false, it means it's not passed into our pivot by function for calculation. So how can we do this? Well, we know that subtotal responds to a slicer and will only include the items which have been selected. So let's use subtotal, open bracket. Now we want to count the rows. So we want a value of one if the row is visible or zero if the row is not visible. So we're going to use three. So that's the count A option. Now we can't just subtotal the entire column because subtotal is an aggregation function. It only returns a single value. Instead, we need to calculate a value for every row in our table. So we're gonna start by placing a placeholder in here of R. Okay, so that's our subtotal piece. But as I said, we can't calculate subtotal in this way. We need to enter this 
into a by row lambda combination. So we'll enter by row and the values we're going to use. We could use any column from our table, but let's use the value column. And then we want to enter a lambda. And that lambda is going to use that parameter of R. So what that means is that for each row in our value column, it's going to use that as the placeholder of R. So now let's close our formula and we'll press return. So far, nothing's changed until we click on our slicer and you can see that as we select those items, that pivot by now updates to just show the items that we have selected. So using this by row lambda and subtotal combination, we can make our pivot by function respond to a slicer that's connected to that source table. We're not restricted to just using this function combination with pivot by, we can also use it with filter. So I'm going to select this section of the formula, I'll press control C to copy that. And now let's come down to cell E18 and add a filter function equals filter, open bracket, and our array. So the first argument will be our data table. Then we have our include argument. These are the rows that we want to include. Well, let's enter our by row, lambda and subtotal combination. And if empty, let's just enter no values. We'll close that function, press return, and now we have a filter function. So if we click on alpha and east, for example, you can see that that adds up to 198. So that's what's in our pivot by function. In our filter function, our values there add up to 198. So we can aggregate our values, but also we can see a breakdown of those values using the filter function. Now you're probably wondering what happens if we get new data? Do our slicers update automatically? Well, let's find out. Here we have our data, and you can see that we have a new region called Central. So I'm going to select all of this additional data, and I'll add this to the bottom of the table. So that table has now expanded. Let's come back, and you can see that we now have a new region of Central, which is also in our pivot by function. If we select that, fantastic, we can see that in our pivot by, and we can also see it in our filter function. So the answer is yes, our slicers do update for whatever items we have inside our table. And that's it. That's how we can use a slicer with our pivot by, group by and filter functions. We just need to know that by row, lambda and subtotal combination, and we can easily get a true or false value for each row in our data that then determines what's returned by each of those functions. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.